No, I was in the 808 state from the beginning. Um, 808 state originally was like a col more of a hip hop collective, except it wasn't called 808 state then. We just had used to put on nights in Manchester via Eastern Block Records. And uh, in that was a guy called Gerald, Gerald Simpson. And he had some equipment, like 808 drum machine, 101 synths. We had some equipment. I mean, basically, we became a group because we just pooled equipment. I mean, we used to, used to churn it out like wallpaper. It was so easy to do. that We just used to make tapes and tapes and tapes of it, like on C90s, and then take it down the Hacienda, you know, and get it played. Like John the Silver would put a cassette on that we just made like half an hour ago, and that was like the actual immediacy of that was really inspiring, yeah. There was quite a big shift towards sort of gay nights, uh, where, where there's quite a mixed audience. And I know a lot of uh, our crew were, you know, this, this boundary of like territory between sort of gay culture and sort of normal straight culture fused quite a bit in the sort of mid 80s around things like new, new order type music, you know, that sort of electro thing that Blue Monday sort of blew out, blew, blew out the doors to. And the crucial sort of radio programme that we used to listen to in Manchester was Stu Allen's show on Piccadilly, Key, Key 103 on a Sunday night. That, that became really influential amongst our group of people, you know, because he was getting all the American imports in and some pretty weird stuff. And it, it started getting like, uh, you couldn't really hear any of that music in clubs at that point, unless you went further afield from Manchester. You know, you'd hear it in like Re uh, Warrington or like all those cutting edge clubs weren't actually in the centre of Manchester, you know, they were actually sort of out in the suburbs. And um, obviously, you know, that Manchester thing was just about starting at that point as well. We definitely saw ourselves as an underground thing that had a life, you know, not like a, a one hit thing, you know. The only other competition around at that point, you've got to remember, is people like Guru Josh and Adamski and things like that, you know, and it was seen as very throwaway culture. It wasn't seen in the same light as coming from a, a, a lineage of all the American stuff. That's how we saw it, you know, it's sort of like building on a big tradition of underground dance music. And again, it was about sort of trying to imitate but making mistakes that, that made some really original stuff, I think. Yeah.